Now we are moving into the fourth mechanism of innate immune response. That's what we call the inflammation or inflammatory barrier. Inflammation is a much familiar response of the uh, body in which uh, uh, there is actually a swelling in the, in the local part of the body where you have an injury. Right, that is what we are much familiar with. So inflammation is the local response of the living tissues in response to an injury due to uh, an agent, usually an external agent. Right, so any injury or a wound will be, will be actually checked by an inflammation system. Because inflammation is a protective strategy of the body, if you do not have an inflammation after a, a, a particular injury, which means your immune system may not be properly functioning. Right, so the responsibility of this inflammation is to remove the actual cause of the damage. Right, so this process of inflammation has been explained even much before the development of immunology as a discipline, like in the 3000 BC itself in Egyptian, Egyptian laparous writings, you can see the cardinal uh, signs and symptoms of inflammation have been recorded. Right, and various agents like uh, living and non-living objects uh, can induce inflammation in living tissues. So uh, there are two basic categories of inflammation. One is acute inflammation and the second one is chronic inflammation. As the term indicates, uh, acute one is uh, having a rapid onset and short uh, duration. Uh, it will be for short duration and there will be the normal process of accumulation and other reaction. This is what uh, normally we suffer during when you have an injury or we have a damage at a particular site in the skin, etc. At the same time, chronic uh, uh, inflammations are having uh, a prolonged uh, or it's, it's not a rapid one. There is a recurrent uh, responses of inflammation and there is a continuous or a prolonged inflammation at a particular body site. Right, Various cells and other uh, reasons are there behind for a chronic response. So the five major signs or the cardinal signs of inflammation are denoted like a rubber, tumor, calor, dollar and functional laser. And the fifth one is recently added and the, the first four were the initially listed one in the Egyptian writings. The rubber is mean, uh, means the redness of the tissues, tumor means swelling, calor the heat generation and dollar the pain feeling and uh, the loss of function as the functional laser. These are the five major cardinal signs and symptoms of inflammation. And uh, the major mechanism of inflammation, the response of the immune system that ultimately leads to inflammation is called the inflammatory response. Right, this occurs just like in case of phagocytosis, uh, there is an external agent coming into the system and that has been identified by the phagocytic cells, then phagocytosis occurs and during this process there will be inflammation. And inflammation is an indication that the immune system is actively working over there and uh, there will be uh, much uh, uh, concentrated activity by the phagocytic cells, especially neutrophils and macrophages then that will ultimately eliminate the foreign substances which are deposited over there, right? So the major events during inflammation are the release of the chemotactic substances of uh, substances by the injured tissues and as a result of that there will be uh, chemotaxis and uh, you know just like we have seen in phagocytosis there will be vasodilation increased vascular permeability then there is chemotaxis uh, diapedesis all those mechanisms are there then that leads to phagocytosis then ultimately the phagocytosis materials are released out right so here you can, uh, this image will explain you that mechanisms. There is vasodilation, uh, then emigration and chemotaxis. Then various chemical substances like chemokines are involved in the, media, uh, in the mediation of inflammation. There are various chemicals like interleukins uh, and other substances like macrophage, inflammatory proteins, neutrophil activating protein, etc. are uh, uh, involved in the activation of uh, phagocytic cell and leading to inflammation right 
So these leukocytes like uh, neutrophils and uh, these macrophages will have certain receptors specific for interaction with these chemokines. And this interaction leads to the activation, migration and effector activities of these leukocytes at the site of uh, injury. And uh, uh, this I am not going to discuss in detail. There are two categories of chemokines like CC group and CXA group. Uh, so, there are different categories of chemokine receptors in short uh, on different uh, leukocytes and they will be involved in the interaction of leukocyte and the chemokines. And uh, here you can see in this image, uh, there is a certain kind of chemokines will leads to the addition of this phagocytic cells into the endothelium and that leads to vasodilation and uh, diapetesis. Uh, that means leads to migration. Then the bacterial cell when interacting with the, uh, the leukocyte receptors will lead to the amplification of the inflammatory reaction and uh, certain cytokines and also certain phagocytic uh, then the, the microorganisms can lead to leukocyte activation and ultimately phagocytosis and killing. So these are the possible effector mechanisms of leukocyte activation. Then uh, uh, when you talk about the various symptoms, how these symptoms occurs, we can provide a, a, a feasible explanation for that. The one is the vasodilation. You know uh, how vasodilation occurs already we, have, we know an idea uh, as we have already discussed phagocytosis. An increase in, in, the, in the diameter of the blood vessels leads to uh, uh, an extravasation or diapetosis. And this leads to, uh, you know, an encroachment or enlargement of the capillaries and that leads to a release of certain fluid into the site also. So the increased blood flow into a site leads to redness. That means more RBCs are also concentrated in that area, which is called erythema. And this leads to the redness in that area, right? So, uh, and also there will be an increased body temperature also. There is an increased temperature at that site of inflammation because there, since there are more cells and more phagocytosis occurs, there is a respiratory burst by the phagocytic cells and there will be, there is more physiological reactions or biochemical reactions are happening. And this, will, this leads to an increased uh, temperature at that particular site. And, uh, uh, and also due to the uh, secretion of substances, there is migration of fluid and migration of tissues, uh, sorry, uh, cells of phagocytes uh, into the site and this leads to uh, a swelling of this area, right. And pain occurs because, uh, you know, there will be injury and as a result there will be production of uh, certain chemicals like bradykinins and prostaglandin that induce the pain. So this is how we can... Uh, uh, explain the signs and symptoms of inflammation. So the process of uh, uh, phagocytosis, I am not supposed to explain again. Uh, you know, the phagocytes are coming in, uh, then there is diapetesis, extravasation, uh, then chemotaxis is there, then ultimately phagocytosis uh, and uh, destruction of the material, then release of the substance out of the phagocyte. So altogether uh, will will leads to inflammation. So this image also will give you an idea about that. So by that uh, we'll uh, move into the next uh, one. Uh, uh, that's natural killer cells. These are uh, the cellular part of uh, innate immunity, apart from uh, the phagocytic cells, right? So these natural killer cells are uh, actually, they are uh, uh, one of the major cell involved in the natural defense of the body. They can interact with uh, the cell cells and also with, uh, uh, with the foreign substance. They can also interact with the foreign substances, but not directly. Right, you have to remember that NK cells or natural killer cells do not interact directly with the foreign substance, but instead they interact through certain mediators. Right, they can also destroy a self cell if it is a viral uh, infected one. That means it is of uh, no use of maintaining a, a self cell. In that situation, this NK cell will target the self cell for destruction. Right.
so the uh, they do not uh, usually attack invading microbes directly instead uh, they interact with the membrane uh, cells of the uh, that means they they kill cells of the body uh, that have been infected with these viruses or these with the organisms and uh, there is uh, you know membrane leakage and destruction so that's about nk cell and the detailed mechanism will be discussed in in the part of uh, cells when we discuss then the final mechanism is about a normal flora of the body the normal flora you know uh, it's a it's a uh, very very uh, reasonable mechanism because you know in the body we have uh, millions and millions of microorganisms deposited at various sites and this number is much larger than the number of cells of a human body so various tissues and organs consist of a bacterial population right and uh, they are hence they are called uh, they are natural to that site and they are hence they are called normal flora of the body or normal biota of the body and these organisms these are these body sites are their natural habitat so any foreign substance any foreign organisms coming into that habitat will not be entertained by these organism so according to the darwin's law there will be a, a, a a competition for the available resources available niche and habitat and also for nutrients and ultimately those which are having uh, uh, more capacity and much in uh, concentration will succeed right so the normal flora will compete these foreign invaders out of the system so this is the basic concept and for that they secrete various chemicals and substances like antimicrobial chemicals collectively we call them as bacteriocins you might have heard of examples like nisin and other substances secreted by the bacteria and we have a lot of very common examples like uh, uh, lactobacillus which are uh, which are, which is being colonized in the intestinal tract and also in the genital systems where you have you know there is a, a secretion of antimicrobial substance and also the acidic secretion and this ultimately leads to uh, the elimination of microorganism or that create an antagonistic kind of mechanism for the elimination so that's about uh, this normal flora okay so here in this uh, this slide shows you various examples for different organisms at uh, at different sites of the human body you can see examples for uh, normal flora at skin at nasopharynx uh, then the digestive system then in the vaginal regions and uh, different uh, organisms located at different sites and their corresponding innate response also being given in this table for your reference all right so by that uh, um, we are winding up this part of discussion of innate mechanisms so hope you followed all those four part of presentations and we have given this in four parts and these are the various references you can go for all these references for detailed discussions and uh, if you have any queries you can ask and uh, thank you for your listening